Hello and welcome to this video in the Lockdown Learning Series where we're going to look at some of the processing that you can do in WaveLab. So I'm going to load up an audio file which has been prepared specially for this for reasons and I'm going to maximize this so we're only going to see this editing window so it makes the most of the space we've got on screen and that's this button here. When you want to go back you click this and that will restore that back to where you were so you can see the other parts of the window if you need to. So here we've got our audio file and we're just going to run from pretty much from left to right on these. So first thing is gain. So some of these, as you'll see, don't need to have anything selected. So some of them, you can do it specifically on a certain part. If you select part of the track like this and some of such as fade in and fade out, you need to do that. But quite a few of them work on the whole track if you've got nothing selected. So let's look at gain. So we're going to click gain here and we've got some presets where you can pick various things so here I'm going to go to minus three so this is going to reduce the level here and you can see the level of that's got lower we've got envelope so this is a way of controlling the volume over time so you can click that here and seems to be a bit buggy sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't but there we go we've got the two dots there so this is the starting level so that would fade over the whole track, which obviously would be just like doing a fade. But you can double click on the line and then create new points. I've got smoothing turned on, so it's going to do smooth things. But if you wanted to create a curve where the volume went up over time and then back down, you can do that using this. This isn't something I use a great deal, but occasionally it's been useful, particularly when I've been doing sort of weird sound design things. It's quicker to do this than it is to do automation over a whole part particularly because you can just double click and add in things like that but you click apply in fact let's do that we'll just click apply and make that a bit more severe so you'll see it go down and you can see the volumes louder there and lower there now the great thing with all these editors of course is undo so control z or command z undoes your latest error Remove DC offset. So this is rarely needed, but this removes, as it says, DC offset. So that would effectively mean your speakers would be static in a particular position, which can be bad for them. So if you just click that, it will give you an analysis. And here you can see there's almost no DC offset anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But if you if you click that as a matter of course and just find out if you have got any big DC offsets, then sometimes removing them can be the right thing to do. But if it's really big, probably best to go back and find out why that's happened because... That's not generally something that you'll end up having anyway. Right, level. So we've got normalizing here. So normalizing is an important part of preparing your audio for distribution, whether it's just for MP3s or whether it's going to go to any online platform. It's it's All it's doing is making the volume so that the loudest level in there is at a specific value that you've set. So at the moment, the reason I picked this or created this audio file is that this the level in this is too low. So we're going to click on the graph part of this here, and then we're going to find the current peak value. And it says here, the peak value is minus 9.975 dB. That is too quiet. That's almost half the volume that it should be. So if you were to play this and then play any commercial track, it would sound like a tiny mouse for two reasons. Partly because of the peak level we're talking about here, but also because everything you hear has been mastered that's a whole other subject which we will maybe come to in this series later on but mastering is the maximization of the levels in in different frequency bands etc it's a simplistic way of looking at it but that's why a lot of tracks sound really loud because they've got loads of energy in every area that they can do so different frequencies this all this does is just finds the loudest level in the whole track and then we'll set that to a specific level changing the volume of everything else to match. So it doesn't change relative volumes of anything. All it does is effectively turn the volume up. There are different standards. Okay, so we can see we've got maximum and EBU R128. So EBU R128 is probably the thing you should go for. There's all sorts of arguments over why you should use this, that and the other. It's a uh, complicated debate that I don't really want to get into but the the shortcut here is I would click this and then just apply EBU R128 recommendation and you'll see that will take it to about minus one dB peak now the track is is much more healthy the the point is if you take it up to zero which you can do you can take it up to maximum but the problem with that is that there are technical reasons why that effectively means the audio should have gone above zero 
and with quite a few streaming platforms now, if you submit audio that's like that, they'll actually turn the volume down because they're trying to get consistency and they're analysing it in a much more complicated way than this with tools which are beyond WaveLab elements. But making sure, you, if even if you just apply that, so if you just apply that recommendation there, then your levels will be about right and your tracks will sound as loud as they can without going over levels and creating other issues. Next up, fade in and fade out. You've seen those before. So if you haven't, if you missed that, you just highlight the area you want and then you can either click fade in or fade out and alt I for fade in or alt O for fade out. And you can pick the curve you want. So if you want to have an exponential fade in or let's go log fade in. So you see that fades in pretty quickly and then the rest of it is a bit slower. So that's fun to be had there. Time stretching and pitch shifting, these are not incredibly high quality in WaveLab Elements because the, when you pay for the, the full version, you get better maths effectively to do this, but you can do this. So let's say you wanted to make this track longer, change the tempo. So let's change the duration. So let's say we want to make it eight minutes long. Eight minutes, zero seconds will do, okay? So let's say we wanted to do that. So you just pick what you want, whether you want to change the tempo or you need to know the source tempo to do that. Target tempo, so on, blah, blah, blah. And then I'm going to click apply. So that's going to make this overall, this will be eight minutes long when it's done, but it, it stretches it out. But the, the quality of that processing isn't amazing. So you do lose some quality. You're better off just rewriting your song generally if you have access to that. So there you go, you can hear that slowed down. I'm just going to undo that and then you hear it again. Now the other side of that coin is pitch shifting. So here we can shift it. So let's put it up to semitones. And here it won't change the length, it will just change the pitch. Again, this isn't without some cost in terms of the quality of the sound. And obviously it's changing the pitch of the bass drum, etc. So... But it's always useful to be able to do that because sometimes you don't have the access to it. Although these are things you can do in Cubase, etc. Pitch bend, similar thing to drawing in an envelope for volume. So I'm not going to actually cover that. Reverse, this is always fun. So whenever you get anybody saying, you know, oh, that music you listen to has got the uh, the reverse thing of, you know, kill your television or whatever in it. Just press reverse. You'll be able to listen to it backwards and go... No, it doesn't, etc. So we're back to that. Now, the analysis. So that's that's it as far as sort of editing and, and fun you can have with generally the analysis here. So if you click this, we can see all sorts of important analysis. Once you click analyze here, so we can see where those peaks are. So you see that that normalization we did had set it to minus one, give or take in both channels. We've got loudness units. So this is important in terms of broadcast audio. So that's another whole topic you can get into and read. But it also tries to analyze things like pitch, DC offset, which you can see is zero, um, and errors as well. So let's see if we can find any glitches in there. So there's 10 points where it thinks there are errors in the file which is interesting and you can look into that. Sometimes that picks up things like, you know, glitches where you've got a little crackle or whatever in a sample. So if you're doing anything which is going to be uh, really important, you can look at that, but let's just have a quick look. And as you can see there, it's got this this step which it thinks maybe is worth looking at. So sometimes that's worth looking at just to check things over because occasionally you get output where it's not too great. But that's that's an overview of the processing you can do in WaveLab Elements. So a lot of this, really, you're going to be spending probably more of your time doing level, fade in, fade out. But sometimes it's useful for doing time stretching and pitch shifting for things that you want to work on or changing tracks to fit in with a, a set that you're making up, etc. That kind of thing. So I hope you found that useful and we'll see you again soon.